Hey guys, welcome to this video, uh, which is the first in a series that explains multi-threading and programming using the POSIX library. So what is multi-threading? Back in the days, we used to have only single core machines, meaning um, I only had one CPU and uh, with the registers, of course and the stack, the heap, etc. And so I could basically only execute one process at a time. And what I, what the operating system did is time slicing. And of course it still does that. And that means alternating between all the tasks that I have. I'll allow a few seconds for T1, a few seconds for T2, and I keep alternating between them, but no two processes can be running at the same time. Then, multi-core computing began to arise and this gave us the option to divide a process into several threads which are like a worker um which are like multiple workers for a same process so a, sa a single process can have two threads for example and those threads are running at the same time so when I do the time slicing now, it's T1 and T2 running simultaneously and T3 and T4 running simultaneously, uh, which means that I can run my programs faster because one thread is doing a part of the computation while the other is doing a second part of the computation. Uh, to put this in perspective, suppose we have a for loop in the same program that runs from I equals zero to one million. I could make T1, um, I, I could make T1 handle the computations for the first 25% of the eyes and T2 for the second and T3 for the third and T4 uh, for the last 25% of, uh, of the iterations needed. So this is how I can divide a single process into multi-threads. Now, of course, you'd ask me how do we write such programs, and you'll need to watch the rest of the series to do that. But what happens when we issue a thread? What happens when we create a thread? So in a, in a process, in a typical process, we have a PCB that includes the stack, uh, which has the registers and uh, all the local variables stored on it. And we have the heap. The heap has everything that's dynamically allocated, meaning everything that's allocated during runtime is stored on the heap. And we have data, which is the set of global variables. And we have text, which is the code. And so every process has something like that. However, when we create threads for the process, uh, we consider those threads as a lightweight process, meaning that they don't get an entire new PCB, uh, which is a program code block. They only get a new stack. So each, each thread will be associated with its own stack and will have local copies of the variables um, of, of the routines they're working on, basically. And they will get a PC. What does that mean? If the first thread is working on certain lines of code, the next line of code it's going to execute is not the same as the next line of code that, P that the second thread is going to execute, and it's not the same line of code that the third thread is going to execute. And that's why... That's why uh, the, the threads will get a program counter associated with them. However, it's important to note that they have access to the same heap and the same data, meaning they, they can easily access all the global variables and everything that's dynamically allocated. And this can potentially create problems because suppose that multiple threads are trying to write to a global variable at the same time they, their work could override each other. And this is why uh, multi-threading is, is very sensitive and you need to write your programs carefully, which is going to be the topic of the remaining videos. But this is it as an introduction. 
and I'll see you in the next video.